Columbia Houston, that's a much better view, uh, a lot more contrast visible. And how wide uh, does that tether appear to be? We, we see, it seems to resemble a, a much wider strand than we'd expect. Can you describe which way the, uh, the satellite is visible on that uh, strand? Satellite uh, now 100 nautical miles. Charlie, completely unzoomed, and uh, you see the full extent of the tether. I tried to adjust the focus, but I can't get better than that. Okay, Claude. Thank you. Good to zoom in now. should mirror exactly what she's doing on the inside. Okay. Right now, the handle is installed with the tab in the unlocked position. I'm going to rotate the tab to the locked position now, if you're ready. We're ready. Okay, we are fully seated in the locked position. Okay, Tammy, we didn't see any uh, any motion on the outside. Uh, if you would, go ahead and uh, move it back to the unlocked. Okay, I'm pulling back to the unlocked, and again, it's only going about uh, three quarters of the way, will not lie flat, and will not see it, as I mentioned earlier. And Tammy, uh, if, if you could, simultaneous with trying to put it in the unlocked position, if you would move the handle a little bit back and forth. Okay, and we can see the handle moving on the outside. Okay, and uh, but any indication that the lock is being actuated? No, we can't. Uh, we can't see any indication of that, and, and it just may be a bad angle and too dark. Amidst the two and a half thousand hours of NASA footage recorded by Martin Stubbs, we have seen countless examples of the spheres, the first space phenomenon. But until now, few have ever come across, least of all seen described, what has been labelled the second space phenomenon. Those that have, have been left speechless, including eminent scientists, astrophysicists and, as we have learned, highly placed figures within the Canadian Space Agency. Someone who was prepared to comment publicly after being shown less than five minutes of the footage was Guido Negro, director of the SETI radio telescope at Golden Grave Observatory in Western Australia. What, we asked, did he make of it all? Well, I was very well impressed, and not only myself, also other people that were looking at. And because this time we are not talking about footage taken off from some home movie camera, but someone that actually was flying a space shuttle, so automatically that gave us the fact that the picture must have been real, genuine, yeah. genuine. Well, I was very well impressed. And maybe this will prove that there is something else that we are not aware of, at least that If the footage that we saw came to be true and really are showing an alien spacecraft or something like that, I say that if there is a cover-up, the, the, the people who are doing this cover-up are an enemy of entire Earth race because we are not children and we must know if, and we must know the truth. It doesn't matter if there are people that are not, they don't know how to handle the truth. Well, the majority of us will 
And if there is a cover up, I think it's time that the cover up goes. Guido could have easily dismissed this sampling as ice crystals at best or errant nonsense at worst. The fact that he chose to do neither is symbolic perhaps of the potential importance both he and a great many others attach to the footage. The owner surely now rests with people like Guido and others elsewhere in the scientific community to determine whether or not the second space phenomena is a genuine phenomenon. And were that proven to be the case, two burning questions would need to be addressed. Is it extraterrestrial? And is it intelligent? If the answer to either is deemed yes, we could have arrived at an historic moment. For Martin Stubbs, it would be the vindication of what he and millions like him have always maintained, that we are not alone in the universe. His, after all, was a chance discovery, a fleeting glimpse of something that sped across his television monitor that most would fail to notice. He focused on that. He looked for more of the same, under different conditions and found them in abundance. But found what exactly? Some of the greatest scientific discoveries known to man have often been born from chance events. But is it remotely conceivable that one of the greatest discoveries of all time could have been similarly unearthed by a humble cable TV manager operating out of a small community station in Vancouver? History will surely go on to determine the truth, provided, that is, Others within the scientific community are equally prepared to explore the limitless possibilities now before them. But who among them will be courageous enough, ambitious enough, to step forward and examine this evidence? There will be many who will choose to ignore it, blinded by self-imposed scientific dogma and bland indifference towards all who champion the extraterrestrial hypotheses. But those that do express an interest may well find themselves embarking upon one of the greatest scientific treks of all time. I can't explain it because I don't th really think that's my job right now. I'm merely a person who's gathering grains of salt together and putting them in front of you. It's as if you have a carpet and you throw, you have a handful of salt and you throw the salt on the carpet you look and you don't think there's any salt there but when you gather it up put it back in your hand you have something 